Hello everybody. Let's start the video with understanding how AI is transforming the current workforce and where IT engineers are playing a role in this. Let's take for example a sales rep from a pharma company, Pawan. Pawan got a call from his manager on Monday morning saying that, Hey Pawan, you just have to go and visit these 20 doctors and tell them what is the new medicine that we have launched in the market. Now, in the old way, Pawan just walks into all these 20 doctors' offices the entire day, sits, waits for the appointment, Sometimes he is lucky, sometimes he is not, and he walks away. Now, in the new way, how AI and how the IT engineers from the AI space, the way they are changing this entire approach is, they are just giving a small app to this particular sales rep Pavan and saying that, hey, before you start your day, just understand what each doctor is doing. Number one, is the doctor involved in any clinical trials? Which means that, hey, if he or she is involved, probably they will be much more willing to understand what is this new medicine about, what are the positives and what are the negatives. If they are not inclined towards clinical trials, they won't even try new medicines. And did the doctor support your sales reps from the same company previously? Now, this information will help Pavan to actually prioritize which doctor to go versus not. This simple app, which is giving two to three lines about every doctor, is changing how the overall performance of Pavan is. So you can see that AI is not necessarily just a buzzword, but it is actually doing a lot of change. And these AI engineers are the ones who are doing this magic sauce. Now, in this video, let's understand what is this entire AI innovation is around? What are the types of AI companies in the market right now? What is required to build these type of companies? And finally, if you are interested in the startup space or in the corporate job, what type of companies can you build? What type of jobs can you get? Very important video. Please do click on that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's get started with the first point. What are the AI companies that we are talking about? There are three broad types of AI companies. The first one is companies which are building large language models, which is the chat GPTs of the world. This is the core innovation that has led to this entire boom of generative AI. And what does it do? In simple words, if I say, hey, I love movies and I also love this large language model is trying to predict the next word in that sentence. It could be I love movies and I also love popcorn. Or it could be something else, or it could be something else. Over the last few years, companies like ChatGPT or OpenAI, they have built these huge mathematical models by getting data from Wikipedia, by getting data from a bunch of internet sources, all the publicly available data, and try to understand, hey, what is the next best word? If we can read the prior words, can we predict the next word? It is trained based on billions of data, right? Now, to recreate this type of company is almost next to impossible is what I would say, because you need a lot of money, first of all, not just millions of dollars, but hundreds of millions of dollars, because you need a lot of computing capacity. You just cannot build this type of company on your laptop. You need GPUs. That's the reason why NVIDIA is growing. The second thing, you probably need to have a lot of understanding about the algorithms, right? A computer science PhD student. Now, the second set of companies that are being built are similar models, but not necessarily large language models. They could be image generation models. For example, you just enter a text and you want an AI generated image. For example, you say that, hey, I want a black cat in a garden and the AI will generate a black cat in a garden setup, right? Now, this again requires algorithms and this again requires some type of innovation. So again, pretty tough to build these type of companies. So the third set of companies are what I call an application layer and the application layer companies are nothing but the ones which leverage the capabilities of an LLM and then build a small use case on top of it. For example, I will connect with OpenAI. I'll help you summarize your data. I'll help you write a better email. I'll help you analyze your data in a better way. A bunch of these different things. This is probably a bit easier to build because there is not much of a large language model development. Of course, you need to have the business context. Not very easy to build any company, to be very, very honest. But still, you don't need to have a computer science PhD to build these type of companies. And there are already companies which are valued at probably two to three billion dollars who have started building 
products in this application layer. If you know any of these companies, please do write in the comment section. I do know a few, but I'll add to that particular list that you are sharing in the comment. Now, these are the broad set of companies and what do you need to actually make sure that this entire AI ecosystem is thriving? Well, before we jump into understanding what is required, a quick shout out to our partners for today's video, Odin School. Odin School, in collaboration with E and ICT Academy, IIT Gauhati, has launched DevOps and Cloud Computing course. It's a six-month instructor-led course where you will be learning from the basics of cloud computing to the advanced AWS core services. And by the end of the course, you will be able to build AI workflows with AWS services. You will end the six month course with a capstone project combining Linux, AWS core services and AI solutions. Once you complete the course, you will get the alumni status from E and ICT Academy, IIT Gauhati. And along with the alumni status, you will also get a course completion certificate. Not just that, you are also eligible for the two day immersive program at IIT Gauhati campus. The course is taught by the mentors from the academic world and also experts from the industry. Once you complete the six month program, you will be eligible to apply for the 500 plus hiring partners at Odin School and also the holistic support Support will continue for two years. You can specifically target roles such as Site Reliability Engineer, DevOps Engineer and Cloud Solutions Engineer. The course fee is 1,20,000 plus GST. You have options to pay through EMI and scholarships are also available. A highly recommended program. So please go ahead and check out the program through the link in the description box. Now moving on to the next section of the video. So to enable this AI innovation, you primarily need data. But the reality is that except the top tier companies in the entire world, when I say top tier companies, let's say top five companies in any given industry, rest all are second tier, third tier, right? Except that top five companies in any industry, rest all do not even have their entire data assembled at one place. Some of it is in SAP, some of it is in Excel sheets, some of it is in a different format altogether. And none of these are connected systems, right? Once you start collecting them and connecting them together at one single place, it's called as a data lake. And to leverage any of this AI innovation, you need that data lake to start with. And hence, the top five companies in the world in every single sector are the ones which are able to leverage these Gen AI capabilities right now. The rest all, are just getting started with building their data lake. And once you have the data and once you have the data lake, for any AI model to actually understand the data, you can give a chat transcript from your customer service team, or you can give an Excel table. AI can read both. To read these files though, it will convert into a vector database. A vector database in simple words is something which AI can understand. Right? And hence, you also need capability to build that vector database. Would you invest as an organization to build that vector database? And using that vector database, you will then start generating multiple analysis, insights, and then summarizing, creating new content for marketing team, helping out the sales rep. All of that stuff happens after you have your vector database. Right. So to enable this AI innovation, there are multiple pre-processing steps that are required. And in my opinion and what I'm observing in the market, all the companies which have not had data lakes so far are now jumping in and creating these data lakes. And that is the reason why we are seeing a lot more number of job opportunities for data engineers in the extraction, transformation, loading domain, ETL space. And this will continue because everybody wants to jump and say that, hey, we are an AI first company. So this will continue. Now, however, the next step is, if you are interested in building your own company, what is the way forward for you? Number one, now you have to see which are the problems that businesses need to solve with the support of Gen AI. It could be, hey, my sales representatives are not having good performances. So you write a small summarizing tool, you implement it on their data, and then you put it into the pocket of the sales rep. Well, it's a very, very, very good business outcome for the company. So whatever area you are coming from, understand that area well, understand the pain points and see, can you use Gen AI to solve that problem? If there is a problem to start with, don't come and say that, hey, I will build a Gen AI company first and then try to solve a problem, whatever is easier. That's not the right approach. However, if you are thinking about 
let's say I want to get into a corporate job, then what is the approach? According to a report by World Economic Forum, 83 million jobs would be lost because of AI by 2027. However, 69 million new jobs are also getting created because of AI. And where are these roles getting created? In the fields like LLM Ops. Well, a term like LLM Ops did not even exist a few years back, literally two to three years back. But now, LLM Ops is a new thing because a lot of these large language models are built, the apps are built, and all these models need to be monitored, they need to be operated, and they need to be implemented on different, different enterprise scenarios. So you need an LLM Ops guy, just like DevOps, you need LLM Ops. So DevOps, LLM Ops are all combining together. Similarly, machine learning engineer and IT engineer, all these roles are coming together. If you are an IT guy, you need to understand, hey, what is the closest thing that I can move to in the AI space and slowly move into that space. By the way, there are a few other roles which are, of course, going to grow because of AI. Once all this data is coming together, this data has to be stored on the cloud. You need a cloud architect and you need a cloud engineer. All these roles are also growing. So understand if you are not getting that direct visibility into AI specific role, what are the adjacent areas which are also growing because of AI and try to get on that bandwagon because the salaries are high, the supply is low, but the demand is high for these roles right now. So why not? End of the day, majority of us are working in the corporates to make more money. And if you know that hey, these opportunities can give you more money, why not learn about it and jump into that bandwagon? I hope this video makes sense to you. If you have any questions, if you want to learn any more topics related to AI, please do let me know in the comment section and I can make specific videos around the same. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.